show about a Jewish guy named Don Stein. In real life, he writes for a magazine sometimes. But now he's got his own cartoon show on VH1, which they hope will be a hit because they sure need one. And even though the show has got sort of a sitcom feel, there's a band and some celebrities for more of you. Joel likes to ask him questions that'll make him squirm. Sometimes he gets punched out, but Joel never learns. Hey, Joel, what do you know? You got your own show. Try not to blow it, cause if you're not funny, then you'll soon be gone. And they can fill the time with some more Lenny Kravitz songs, then you'll be back in obscurity where you belong. Hey, Joe. We'll let you know. Thanks. Bye. That was Randy Newman's publicist. Ivy, a sweetie. Say hello for me next time. It wasn't Ivy. Oh, Gloria? A pistol. Call her back and say hello for me. And ask if Hollis is there. He's another pistol. Really a pistolero. It wasn't Gloria and it wasn't Hollis, two-gun. Do you think it makes you special knowing the names of people who wait on other people? I think it shows I'm in the loop. Probably just one reason Randy Newman keeps calling to be booked on my show. The other reason is because of how buddy-buddy they've gotten. Joel tells me things. Well, tell Joel that Randy Newman's animated film scores may win Oscars, but cartoons aren't something we give a flying crap about at VH1, so I'm not booking him again. But he's my celebrity friend! Oh, please. Randy's just buttering your roll to get airtime. Joel, you said you guys hang out on his roof and try out harmonies. Oh, yeah? Is his apartment as cool as I hear? Which one? The big one or the blue one? Or the one where you've never been? Friendship. Right. It's a celebrity friendship. That's different. When celebrities become friends, it starts on the air, and if it's good, it stays on the air. You think Letterman and Schaefer barbecue on weekends? No. And I can't help thinking Paul's clown glasses are only there to hide his pain. Just book Randy Newman, okay? Book him? What? And watch Joel's heart broken when he finally realizes they're not friends? Got to. So, Randy, you've pretty much destroyed your reputation as a serious songwriter with these Disney tunes, but luckily you still have your friends. Hey, buddy. What? Ooh, winsomely good. Any chance your next little friendship song will be about me? About you? After what you just said to me? That only a friend could. Sorry, my friends don't slash me from the blind side. That's a hockey reference! I'm a hockey fan, too! Let's go to a game! And sit near the cameras. Thanks, but I catch my hockey at home. That way I can rewind the fights and watch them over and over. The sweet catharsis of a 30-stitch melee melts away the Katzenberg anger every time. Katzenberg anger like he's banging your banger. No! I collect hockey fight tapes, too. We're so alike. Well, I bet I have a more superbo hockey fight collection. No way, high stick amigo. Name your top tape. Isn't it interesting how Joel gets so aggressively masculine when he's talking about hockey? You'd almost think he was a man. Yeah? How about the live feed Ty Domi, Sandy McCarthy fight that even Hockey Night in Canada cut away from? Hockey Night wouldn't show the fight. Huh? That bloodbath exists? You've got to copy it for me. I need that one. Need it. I really care. Please, please, please. I'll be your best friend. A buzz to your Woody. There goes that masculinity thing. I've got a celebrity friend in him. When I need an invitation to the Vanity Fair Oscar party. Another donation envelope? Every week we get one of these. Him. Who's it for this time? Wendy Jane's dad passed away. So Hugo and Z bought her a George Foreman grill to ease her pain. Room for 12 burgers. Nonstick? Michelle, it's a Foreman. See, I resent this. The big bosses make the big gesture. Wendy thanks them profusely. Then the donation envelope passes around for us little people to chip in. But do we ever get thanks? The little ones? Never. There are no little people, Michelle. Just little donations. Oh, hmm. Good point. FYI, Kevin, be on the lookout for a VHS from my celebrity friend, RN ASAP. Respectfully, Joel, can an illegally copied fuzzy bootleg tape someone bought out of a car trunk really be the basis of a friendship? Those are the best friendships of all, as long as the FBI doesn't find out. Friendship's tricky. How many men have tried to buy mine with trips, clothes, or a batch of jalapeno poppers? And you never sleep with them. That's impressive, Michelle. Sleep with them, not sleep with them, that's not the point. The point is, oh God, why do I always sleep with my friends? Production. Maybe you just wanted to take the friendship to the next level. Some friendships are already at the perfect level. Suppose the next level involved a bubble bath foot rub to the pounding native rhythms of Peter Gabriel's passion. Some friendships need to be taken down a level. Joel, mailroom says no tape today. 
Are we gonna do this every day, yo? It's not here, it's never been here. Kinda like the Knicks' will to win. You lost my celebrity friend Randy Newman's tape. Nice work. Dude, there's no tape. Zero. Like the number of Nets championships. Since he's your friend, just grab it up next time you're at his place. My celebrity friend. I wouldn't know where he lives. Then call him. A celebrity's home phone number? I'm not even sure they have them. I call him through his publicist, that headcase Ivy. No name on this letter. If it smells like perfume, could it be anthrax? Either way, it'll be for Carson Daly. Wow, this confidential memo says that right now, Z feels VH1 has only two assets. Leaf and you. They like me. They really like me. Joel Stein's valuable because we burned him so bad on his deal that we pay less for his show than dead air. Literally. They screwed me. They really screwed me. This memo is actually about Z's fear that MTV might make a play for Leaf. She recommends doing whatever it takes to keep him. Ugh, I can't believe this. Leaf is such a phony, low-life, cereal-stealing windbag. Cereal-stealing? Hypothetically. Seems a type. Look, it begins. What, buying him lunch in the company cafeteria? BFD. Oh. Open your hearts. Apple Crisp Mary is retiring. How will the lunchroom ever be the same? Z and Hugo bought our lifetime supply of budgie seed. Chip in. This is really starting to piss me off. Friendship as a windship. It transcends ships, split and ships. Bettina! Friendship is shipping. Thought I'd personally pick up that tight me Sandy McCarthy fight tape. South of the border, Edo's? Am I still listed in the phone book? You are in Z's unguarded computer. Who's the master? Who's the master? A manly back pound would be perfect now. Oscar winner, Randy Newman. Hey, Sting! No, no, forget the salsa and chips. I got them. But Tail Springsteen... Tail Springsteen what? That Joel makes one fantastico celebrity salsa? Sure, I'll teach you the ingredients. Bruce! Fresh tomatillos. Jersey tomatillos. Green chili. Green, like the signs for the Garden State Parkway. Guar gum, like Meadow Soprano chews. Something I can't pronounce. Something else I can't pronounce. Yo, a bro, a three minutes with Joel Stein, no sip of Mundo till Hugo and Z's flatterification has completed his journey like the frisbee to the dog's mouth. Uh oh. Now Leaf will never be my celebrity friend. Continue with more leafy goodness like chocolate lettuce pause for breath. <gasps> so, to celebrate VH1's deal with Leaf's brand new production company, Total Broa Entertainment, let's raise our glasses and salute Leaf with a $5,000 gift certificate good for one rhinoceros shooting at Barry's Las Vegas Family Safari Slaughter. Whoa, uh, Leafer's turn to go out with a huge zoidal danka shalom to all the supersized VH1 execs like Zizi and Hugo. Then tomorrow we can all chip in. Today I feel like that snakefish that walked from the land into the sea so our world could begin with the first cave woman giving birth to a dinosaurus. P.A. Cheryl, can we option the story? It's good stuff there. Brilliant idea, Leaf. This is making me sick. The fawning over Leaf like he's a celebrity? This cheap-ass champagne. But the fawning isn't helping. Where's my fawning? I need a fawn just like any man. Fawn on me. It doesn't fold, you imbecile. Easy, Michelle, babe broa, who folded me like an accordion to play me like a slut of phone, April 2001. <gasps> Michelle! <laughs> I can't believe Leaf would spread rumors about you. That's so high school. Except then it was me spreading rumors about myself. Poorly conceived rumors that vastly overestimated Mrs. Griglack's mass appeal. I'm sure there was no truth to Leaf's slander. None at all. It all happened the night of the always tense Divas Without Makeup party. There were shrooms everywhere. Sure. The Divas love shrooms. Leaf and I went back to my place, I swear, just to watch the Twilight Zone marathon. But wouldn't you know it? Every single episode was about aliens eating shrooms. I don't remember any episodes like that. Secretly. You had to be there. Anyway, things got out of hand. Kicks. Kicks are for treads. I'm sure there's something in that story that vindicates you, Michelle. He saw you naked! And with eight arms, those were some shrooms. <phone rings> Rob Halford must be here. You sobered up to do a show? Are you kidding? After that Leaf story, I'm getting into a program. Joel, meet Rob Halford, formerly of Judas Priest. Alf Samuelson, bit of a dirty player. He got the job done. You're a fan? I am, especially the fighting. It's a violence ballet. I'll collect tapes. Let's talk about that on the show! No, not another hockey fight show. Have you heard this guy's solo stuff? Besides, I know the key to his soul. He needs a friend. 
Sure, Mr. 400 Hockey Fight Tapes, impressive, but now I'd like to cement a friendship for which I'm open with a little gift. What if I can score you a copy of this, me droog? The famed Ty Dummy Sandy McCarthy Rumpus. Damn, Randy Newman! That's a copy from my original. I told Newman he could never give it away. Give it here. Fat chance, aging metal man. <gasps> I'm gonna stop this. In a minute, violence ballets are ratings boosters. <laughs> Camera one, come around on Joe. Kevin, look at those comedy sound effects. I may want to recut. <laughs> Joel, give him back his tape. Joel, sit further away. I can't believe you two need me to referee this. Is that the only copy, Joel? Yes, if you don't count the 30 dupes I mailed out already. Ha! Come and get me, metal sap. Look, Rob, so this ends here, today. What can VH1 do to make this up to you? Well, now maybe there is something. See, the person I'm closest to in the whole world is Deborah Gibson. 80s teen dork mob Debbie Gibson? Shake your love, Debbie Gibson? You're friends with her and you got beat up by me? Dude, get out of the metal game. Deborah has a new album of show tune covers coming out. Deborah Gibson's Piano Land Memories. So here's what I'm thinking. He wants us to book Deborah Gibson to promote her album? Fine. What's another bad show? Forget I said that. I'll start the research, but I won't go into the I Love Show Tunes chat room, Michelle. I won't. No, Kev. Halford insisted I do the pre-interview over at Deborah's apartment to really get the feel of Miss 1986. Imagine all those dorky pictures of her with the original Charlie's Angels. That's the 70s, but I get it. You learn all this inside dope, then on the show really put her through the ringer. Yeah, the ring-a-ding-dinger. That's the 60s, and now you're starting to scare me. Hmm, nice digs for a has-been. Hi, Joel. Nice shiner. You... you think so? I got it fighting for the honor of 80s pop. And we'll have a real good time! Just one of the unforgettable melodies from the 1959 smash hit Gypsy. But you have a pad of questions we should get to. You know, Deborah, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on these soft pitch questions. Think of my show as a relaxing talk between two old friends. I'm glad you're not a celebrity. Yeah, me too. Because I hate celebrities. A celebrity is hurting me right now. Is it me? Am I sitting on you or something? Joel, you're not a celebrity. Right, just checking. Sure, she was seductive and perfect, but what chance do I have? One, she's being hurt by a guy. Two, she's being hurt by a celebrity guy. Three, girls love the hurting guy. There it is, Kev, the hat trick of my life. Now he's got a thing for Debbie Gibson? He admires her plucky career never give upness. And that she comes on like a stripper. Debbie Gibson comes on like a whore? A stripper? Gosh, Michelle, you of all people should know the difference. The question is, how did four pathetic drunks become role models for an entire generation of women? And could a pathetic man ever have his own series? I mean, a truly pathetic man? <laughs> Who'd watch it? Shake your lust, it really is a must. Shake your lust, I just can't shake your lust. It's such a drag to be a non-celebrity. Just another schmuck, a complete non-VIP. No notoriety, no high society. You're not famous just because you're on TV. Though Joel had hoped the one-time child star would be impressed He came off as just another lame-ass cable host hitting on his guest And now Debbie's heart is pining for some cruel but at least fairly well-known guy While Joel resorts once again to whining about fame passing him by such a drag to be a non-celebrity Just another schmuck, a complete non-VIP No notoriety, no high society You're not famous just because you're on TV You're not famous just because you're on TV Well, Michelle, you called it. Everyone's been asked to kick in on Leaf's rhino slaughter. It's for the team. Skip you this time. Beat it. I 
slept with Leaf, and he ate all my food, and I slept with Leaf, and I'm hungry, and I want vodka. I think I already took one for the team. Or was it two? <laughs> Oh, I, uh, had a big bill and made change. Um, of course. It's gracious of you to contribute to Leaf's gift at all. Well, bygones. <laughs> I feel much cleaner this way. And Deborah Gibson wants to talk to you about Joel. Then I'd better get on that, because that's my job, producer, that I've been entrusted with, because I'm so, uh, untrustworthy. Deborah, there's a problem. Joel's being weird with me. Well, that narrows it down. You know, like I'm destroying him. Like the feeling feels so real, and then I reach out, try to touch it, and it's gone. What musical that closed out of town is that from? That's not from a musical. That's me. That's worse. Um, maybe it is a bit like a song they did at Miss Saigon, but only when royalty was in the audience. Look. Joel's crazy about you. Date him. But that's the problem. I'm in love with my best friend, Rob Halford. Halford? He's been out for years. He's gayer than clown college. I know. It's doomed. Joel's writer for me. Someone who seems gay but isn't. You'll hardly notice a difference. Ladies, let's just go and shine like newly polished Jimmy Choo's. You're so right. If Rob Halford fell for anyone named Gibson, it would probably be Mel. But Debbie didn't get this, and that's why her life became a living hell. And now that Joel sees that there's no chance for romance between the former teen queen and the queen in the leather pants, he's making his play for Debbie today, since she found out that Alfie is gay. Wow, Michelle, two three minutes first today. Joel asks out a guest on air, then the guest thanks you for setting them up. What are the odds on that? It's television history. Or it would be, if you could call what we do on VH1 television. You want to know what I think? No, I'm still chewing on the sentence two three minutes first. I think you did a nice thing for Joel because... I don't know what you're talking about. Not that you've said anything yet. I can only imagine. And you're wrong. Because you're working off some guilt about... something... Oh, I am screwed. Huh? You just got a date with Deborah Gibson and all America saw it. Or that tiny fragment of America that watches VH1. By the way, the research department figured out where our heaviest concentration of viewers is. The TV's in the lobby. We all got the email. Oh. Excuse me! Screwed here! Sorry, why, Joel? Guess where I'm taking Deborah Gibson tonight. The Rangers game. Her idea. Her idea! So... So Rob Halford's singing the national anthem. And she knew it! Deborah doesn't want me. She's just a cheap metal chick. Like Tony Katane until she married that nice ball player she beat up. Joel, he's there. But she's with you. Thanks, Oprah. But I know what I have to do. I'm off to protect my woman from the gay man who's not interested in her. Michelle, they have awoken a sleeping giant. I think it's awakened. I think I'll drop by Human Resources and see if there are any openings at Noggin. Hey, you're back. For you. Hey, 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 no need to throw down. I'm happy about you two. You better be, because I'll do it. Just need a sec. I just thought I'd ask Deb would she duet with me on the national anthem. I'll have to discuss that with Joel. Oh, okay. How's your crotch? The one I made sore. With my violence belly, I mean. Joel, I'm over him, but if my going down to the ice would bother you... The ice? Well... I might feel better about this if I actually came down there with you to the hallowed ice where Messier bitch slapped Sutter with the business end of his stick. It will be romantic. Yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go. Rob, I talked her into it. There's an explanation for my behavior, but I can't tell it to you. I know what I saw, P.A. Yes, sir. I saw a P.A. who'll always be a P.A. Huh? You reached into her purse, took some money, had a change of heart, and stuck it in the donation envelope. You want to get ahead in this business? You steal and you keep. I don't want Mr. Putback working for me. You're at a fork in the road, son. Watch. Now you. A buck? Again. Now you're working in television. Watch out, me. This kid's gonna take my job. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's Perched on the 
Thomas Zamboni, symbol of U.S.-Canadian hockeyistic friendship, he realized that life was good. Sing out, Deborah. Sing that anthem. Speaking of gleaming, I've always thought your eyes had a special gleam to them, Rob. What? And the bomb rockets burning, bursting in it! Rob, my heart is bursting for you. But Deborah, what about our love? Way to go! By saying love on the ice, you jinxed the season! But Rob loves me! Joe, control your woman! Make her stop saying love! Oh, it's me you love! 